Hey guys, I'm Jonas. Today we're going to be going over how to install our clutch kit on your Yamaha Drive 1 or Drive 2. Now for this installation, we're going to be using this Drive 2 Quiet Tech model. But this general procedure is going to be the same whether you've got the non Quiet Tech or a Drive 1 model and if you have a lift kit or a rear seat kit installed on your car. There may just be some variations in what you have to do to actually get the clutches removed from your car. Now we do have these clutch kits along with the pullers and compressors and a ton of other goodies for these newer model Yamaha golf carts available on our website at PowerEquipmentMan.com and I'll leave a link for them in the description down below. Now the primary purpose of installing a clutch kit on your cart is to help get more bottom end torque. So if you live in a very hilly area or you're going to be pulling or pushing heavy loads or you've installed oversized tires or high speed gears, a clutch kit is going to help get back that torque that you lost down low. Now we offer our clutch kit in three different stages. A stage one kit is just going to include a premium severe duty drive belt along with a heavier spring to go in your secondary clutch. Now a stage two kit will include the belt and the spring along with a set of weights to go in your primary clutch. But if you get a stage three kit, that will still include the belt and the spring, but it's also going to come with a complete replacement primary clutch. Now these primary clutches are a different design from what your factory clutch is. So these are made to deal with a lot more bottom end power. Now I wanna be very clear that a clutch kit has to deal more with bottom end power and shifting through your RPM range. A clutch kit really isn't going to have any effect on getting more top end speed. A lot of times a clutch kit might even slow you down a mile an hour or two. So I don't want you guys to order a higher staged kit thinking that it's just going to be better and make you go faster because that's not how these work. These are all about bottom end torque. Now the color of spring that you get for your secondary clutch is going to vary depending on your application. We get the information from you when you're choosing from the drop down menus on the website when purchasing the kit and that gives us the information that we need to determine what spring we should include in your kit. Now unfortunately these kits are not just a one size fits all. There's a lot of different applications out there and some guys have different wants or needs on how they're wanting their car to perform. Now if you guys order a kit and you're just not happy with how it's performing and you either want it to be more aggressive or less aggressive, feel free to contact us through the website and we'll be able to get you set up with either a different spring or a different stage to try to help better fit your application. Now to try to help you determine which stage of clutch kit that you need to get, you really need to look at your application. What are you doing with the cart? What is your terrain like? Are you in a very hilly area? Are you just more on flat ground? Are you just hauling around, you know, the family, a wife, and a couple of kids on the back? Or are you hauling four adults on a regular basis? So the more heavy your loads are going to be and the more extreme that your conditions are, that's when you need to go up to higher stages. So a lot of people, a stage one kit might work just fine or even a stage two. A stage three is really only going to be for those very extreme conditions when you really need that extra torque. Now if you're really just looking to get more speed out of your cart, I would really recommend installing a high speed gear set. Now you could also install a clutch kit with those high speed gears so that the clutch kit makes up for the bottom end torque that you're going to lose after installing those gears. Now one thing that I do encourage you to look at before ordering your clutch kit is to verify which secondary clutch that your cart has. Now in some of the Drive 1s and even some of the early model Drive 2s, Yamaha did use what we call the 4 rivet clutch. So on this side of the clutch, it has four rivets that are holding that clutch together. Now as these clutches get older and more worn out and we start applying more power to them or speed, doing clutch kits, 
These clutches are known to come flying apart. This whole side cover can come flying off in quite a few pieces and end up causing damage. Now later, Yamaha did upgrade to what we call the six rivet clutch. So it's got six rivets now holding this clutch together. Now if your car does have the older four rivet style clutch on it and you wanna upgrade to the six rivet clutch, we do have those new style clutches available on our website. And if you order the new style clutch along with a clutch kit at the same time, we will go ahead and install your new spring in the new clutch before we ship it out to you. If you have a Drive 1 from 2007 to 2012 and a half that still has the old style team clutches on it, you will need to upgrade to the new style clutches for this kit to work. Those old team clutches were plagued with a lot of issues. Now, if you just purchased a stage one kit, all that you've got to do is remove the secondary clutch from the cart. Now, if you don't have a rear seat kit on your cart, it's super easy to just remove the rear access panel off the cart, and then you can reach in to get to that secondary clutch. However, if you do have a rear seat kit on your cart, you can get to that secondary clutch from the front side by just raising your front seat. Now to actually remove that secondary clutch, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the drive belt. Just pull up on that drive belt and then roll it off of the secondary clutch. Now you can use a 12 millimeter socket on an impact gun to remove the bolt that holds that clutch on. Then the clutch should just slide right off. To install the spring in your secondary clutch, you are going to need some type of a clutch compressor. Now there's a lot of different options. You can make one or we have a complete compressor available on our website that's a really nice heavy duty compressor. But I have seen a lot of guys just make something with stuff that they have laying around the garage. Now it can be as simple as just using a piece of angle iron and a piece of all thread and either welding the all thread to the angle iron or even if you just drill a hole through it and put a nut on the top and bottom side to hold that all thread in place. Really the only complicated part of the clutch compressor is what you use on top of it to be able to still have room to get in and remove our snap ring. Now that can be as simple as just something as a piece of rectangle or big square tubing and cutting a hole in the bottom of it and being able to slide that down on there. Or we even used this one for quite a while in our shop press. So just a, a hydraulic press that we would just put a little bit of pressure down on top of this to push down on the top of that clutch and still be able to get in there to remove the snap ring. Now if you're going to use a piece of all thread or some setup similar to this, you are going to want that all thread to be about a foot long. You have to have enough room that as you're releasing the pressure off of this cap, you don't run out of threads before you get the pressure off of the spring. After sliding our driven clutch onto the clutch compressor, then you can install the hold down fixture, flat washer, and nut. Now before you start disassembling the secondary clutch, it is a good idea to use a black marker to make a mark on both halves of the clutch so that when you reassemble it, it's gonna go back together in the same position that it was before you took it apart. So just using a black marker, you're gonna make a mark on the helix and on the movable sheave. So when you put those two back together, you can line them up. Now we just need to tighten this nut down far enough that we can remove the snap ring. Now remove the nut, washer, and hold down fixture. Now we can remove the snap ring, washer, and helix. Then you can remove the factory spring and install your new one. While you've got your clutch disassembled, now is a good time to inspect for any wear. Look closely at the ramps and shoes for any grooving or excessive damage. Now you can reinstall your helix, washer, and snap ring. Now you do need to be very careful as the helix starts to slide back onto the shaft. There are splines that need to get aligned as it's going back together. If you feel any excessive resistance at all, stop and back off the compressor and try again.
Make sure your snap ring is fully seated and then back off the compressor. You do need to add one pump of multi-purpose grease to each clutch. Now it is a good idea to go ahead and hit the face of these clutches with a Scotch-Brite pad while you've got it removed from the cart. Once you've kind of got this face good and scuffed up, then we like to use some suspension clean or brake clean and spray and wipe those faces down and get them as clean as you possibly can. You don't want any grease or dirt built up on the face of that clutch when we go to install our new belt. Now if you bought a stage two or a stage three kit, you are going to need to remove your primary clutch from the cart. Now to do that on these drive two models, the easiest thing to do is to just remove part of your rear body. Now if you've got a rear seat on your cart, it's typically pretty easy to remove those rear seats as one complete assembly by just removing the mounting bolts. Once you've got that rear seat out of your way, then you can go ahead and remove the rear access panel, the front center panel, and then the left side body panel. Now you can go ahead and move the battery out of your way and this sound deadening panel. Next, you'll need to use a 22 millimeter socket to remove the bolt that's holding on our drive clutch. Then you can go ahead and thread in your clutch puller by hand. You do not want to cross thread this puller. It's also a good idea to apply some anti-seize to the threads of the puller before installing it. Now you can start applying pressure to that puller until the clutch pops loose. Then you can remove the puller from the clutch and get the clutch out of the machine. Now when you're working with these primary clutches, you do want to be careful as these clutches do come apart. This movable sheave will slide up off the shaft of the fixed sheave. Now inside of this movable sheave, there is a seal and a bushing that we don't want to damage with the splines on this shaft. So you want to try to keep this together as one assembly if you can. Start installing the weights in our primary clutch, we first need to use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the three screws holding on the cover. Now we'll need to use a two millimeter Allen head wrench to remove the set screws that are holding the pins connecting the weights to our link arms. Now there is going to be a lot of small parts to keep track of while disassembling this clutch. Now you can remove the pin from the link arm. There'll also be a washer on either side of that arm that you need to remove as well. Then repeat this process on the other two link arms. Before removing the spider from the shaft, we do want to make a mark on the spider and the sheave. Now you can slide the spider up and off the shaft. Now we can loosen the set screw on the spider and remove the pin. Install one washer on either side of the weight and then slide the weight back into the spider. Now I like to swap these weights out just one at a time. That way you can reference the other weights to see how your new ones need to be installed. Then you can reinstall the set screw. Now repeat that process on the other two weights. Now we can reinstall the spider onto the shaft, making sure to align our marks from earlier. Then install a washer on either side of the link arms and reinstall the pin. Then repeat that process on the other two arms. I always like to test the clutch for smooth operation before installing our cover. Now you can reinstall your cover making sure to align the cutout for the grease zerk. 
Now to reinstall this primary clutch, you do not need to adjust your starter generator. You should be able to just reinstall the belt onto the clutch and then the starter generator and then install the clutch onto the crankshaft. Install your clutch bolt and tighten down to spec. If you are installing a stage two or stage three kit, it is easiest to reinstall both clutches at the same time with the belt on the clutches. That way you won't have to mess with trying to roll the belt on later. If you are just doing a stage one kit, then you will just have to roll that belt on after you've reinstalled the clutch. Now you can reinstall your battery and body panels. Now we do have these clutch kits along with the pullers and compressors and a ton of other goodies for these newer model Yamaha golf carts available on our website at powerequipmentman.com and I'll leave a link for them in the description down below. Well that's going to wrap it up for today guys. If you got some good value out of this video please hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.